Ledger and Trezor are two of the most popular crypto and NFT hardware wallets. But choosing which one is right for you can be a really tough decision. And when you're holding crypto assets that can be worth hundreds, thousands, tens, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars, you need to make the right decision. Today, I'll be covering the two models sold by Ledger, the Nano S and the Nano X, as well as the two models sold by Trezor, the Model 1 and the Model T. And by the end of this video, you'll know which of these four hardware wallets is right for you. I'm Devin Cook, let's talk hardware wallets, and welcome back to Dev Money. Before we get into the differences between these hardware wallets, you should know that both options are gonna be really great and both are gonna add a lot more security than just using MetaMask or just using Trust Wallet. And feel free to check out some of my other videos if you wanna learn more about why you should use a hardware wallet. So I'm first gonna talk about Ledger, then Trezor. I'm gonna talk about each of the companies and what are some of the unique aspects of using Ledger versus Trezor. And then I'll be talking about each model that the company sells. And there's links for all of these wallets down below in the description. So first we'll talk about Ledger. And the first thing that we need to talk about with these hardware wallets is of course security because that's why you're buying these hardware wallets to begin with. You wanna secure your crypto and NFTs. So the thing that makes Ledger so secure is they have what's called a secure element. It's basically a chip with its own operating system on the hardware device that secures the crypto and the private keys. The secure element in the Ledger hardware wallet is a secure chip that provides an added layer of security compared to a standard one. It's the same technology you would find in credit cards, passports, and SIM cards, which protects highly sensitive information from being accessed by malicious parties. Now, besides having a secure chip, the Ledger is the only one in the world that works in tandem with a custom operating system called Bolos. The unique combination between the secure chip and the Bolos make the Ledger hardware wallets a state-of-the-art security beacon in the world of crypto wallets. And not only do they have the secure chip, but they also have their products independently certified for their security. We at Ledger firmly believe that it's our responsibility to make sure that the products we put out are 100% attack proof. This is the reason why our secure element chips have undergone a common criteria security evaluation. And this common criteria security evaluation is an international standard for banking cards and state requirements. After undergoing the evaluation, Ledger products have been rated at an EAL 5 plus level. This is basically saying that by reaching EAL 5 plus, Ledger hardware wallets are at the pinnacle of security, the highest level of security against all penetration tests. And if you would like, you can go out and research more about the common criteria security evaluation and just see more about what goes into that. And to my knowledge, a Ledger hardware wallet has never been hacked and so they are very secure. However, you cannot say the same about the company Ledger itself. Because at the start of 2021, they did have a data breach in which 20,000 records from their customers was leaked to the public. And this included names, postal addresses, emails, and phone numbers, which can be really scary, especially in this world of crypto. And after that was leaked, it was sold to the dark web, and a lot of people were getting these phishing emails that looked like they were from Ledger, and it resulted in some people having their crypto stolen because their private keys were being inputted because they thought Ledger was asking for them, and then they got their cryptos and their assets stolen from them. So that's something to think about. Their ledger devices are extremely secure, but apparently their data systems are not as secure as their hardware wallets. And on top of that data breach earlier in 2021, they also had a data breach in 2020 where they had about 200,000 emails and addresses leaked to the public. So this is just something you need to be aware about when ordering a ledger device. Also keep in mind though, we do live in a world where hacks are commonplace. Oftentimes you're gonna see hacks from Google, hacks from your banks, hacks from Facebook, where private client data is leaked to the public and obviously we don't want this to happen but it is also just a part of the world that we live in. Now one of the features that makes Ledger stand out from Trezor is that it's much easier to stake your cryptocurrencies with your Ledger device than with your Trezor device and this is just because Ledger allows you to stake your cryptocurrencies natively through Ledger Live whereas with Trezor you have to go through a third-party app or third-party wallet in order to do so. So it's just a lot easier to do with the Ledger device and with Ledger you get to use Ledger Live which has been out for a couple of years now and it's gotten quite a few updates and has some really nice features. And one of the new features that's gonna be added on here soon is the ability to loan out crypto straight through Ledger Live. And another thing that's really nice about Ledger Live is you can check your cryptocurrency balances without having your Ledger device connected. And if you're looking for a device to store your NFTs, well, Ledger is gonna be really good in that regard as well, because not only does Ledger support Ethereum NFTs, but it also supports Polygon NFTs and Solana NFTs. However, please note that if you're storing your NFTs on your Ledger device, you're not gonna see the NFTs show up in Ledger Live. You're only gonna see your NFT show up in your MetaMask account, in your Phantom Wallet, or in your OpenSea account when you have your wallet connected. And that's just because Ledger Live does not support NFTs natively through their app yet, although Ledger did announce that that support is gonna be coming in 2022. So if you're big into NFTs, Ledger's gonna be a great option. Now let's talk about Trezor. And of course, we gotta start off with security. And one of the things that makes Trezor stand out from Ledger is that Trezor is open source. Ledger has that security chip and their independent certification and all of that, but you largely have to trust 
trust Ledger and what they're doing and their security when you're choosing their wallets. However, with Trezor, if you have any questions and if you're super techie and can understand code and everything like that, then you can just check out all of their code. It's available to everyone that's online. All you have to do is come on to github.com slash Trezor and you're gonna be able to see basically everything you could ever want about Trezor, its software and its code. And the benefit to this is that you can see all of the code, it's very transparent and people can see the code, see potential weaknesses and then reach out to Trezor or help Trezor improve that and patch anything that needs to be patched. The downside to that, however, is that also someone that's trying to hack the Trezor can also see all of that code and could potentially have a slight advantage because they can see all of the code. So you're gonna have to decide for yourself, do you wanna trust a company like Ledger that has their secure chip with its own operating system and their independent certifications? Or do you wanna go with a company like Trezor that's just extremely transparent and shows you all of the code and everything securing your crypto? And when it comes to hacks, unfortunately, Trezor has had some issues in that department as well. In this article from January of 2020, the popular crypto exchange Kraken revealed that Trezor wallets actually can be hacked. Kraken's security division revealed that the entire family of Trezor wallets can be hacked to steal private keys, though the method requires specialized hardware. Kraken Security Labs revealed revealed on January 31st that the Trezor hardware wallets and their derivatives can be hacked to extract private keys, which means that anyone can steal your crypto. Though the procedure is quite involved, Kraken claims that it requires just 50 minutes of physical access to the device. Trezor, of course, responded to that with an entire article outlining exactly what happened and also their strategy for handling attacks such as this. And they say that only about 5% of attacks on wallets are physical. Most of them come from remote means. So when you're looking to get a hardware wallet, understand it provides much better security than just using a typical trust wallet or MetaMask or even Coinbase or Kraken or something like that. But also it's not 100%, it's not fail proof. There is gonna be some risks as well. And you need to be aware of these, which is why I'm making this video. And the way you interact with Trezor is through the Trezor suite. Now with the Trezor suite, you're not able to manage your crypto accounts without having your Trezor wallet connected to your computer. So that is something to be aware of. And Trezor Suite does have a few less features than the Ledger Live, but mainly because the Trezor Suite has not been out for nearly as long as Ledger Live. And so probably in the future, they're gonna be updating this, upgrading it, and we should be getting a lot more features as time goes on. And when it comes to NFTs and you're looking to use a Trezor, you're totally fine to store your Ethereum NFTs within your Trezor. However, you should know that Polygon NFTs have a bit less support on the Trezor than they do on the Ledger. Your Polygon NFTs are not gonna be supported on the Trezor Model 1, however, they should now be supported on the Trezor Model T since they recently had an update to their software on December 10th that allowed for Polygon support. And when it comes to Solana NFTs, well, Trezor doesn't support Solana, so you won't be able to store your NFTs there or even your Solana cryptocurrency. Now let's talk about each crypto wallet from Ledger as well as from Trezor. So first again, from Ledger, we have the Ledger Nano S right here and we have the Ledger Nano X right here. The Nano S is $59 and the Nano X is $119. Now the Nano S is gonna be really great for beginners just getting into crypto and the Nano X is gonna have a couple more features. One of the features that Nano X has over the Nano S is that it offers Bluetooth support, which means that you can sign transactions using Bluetooth without actually having to connect your device to your computer. Now the capacity that each of these wallets have is gonna be one of the biggest deciding factors when choosing the Nano S or the Nano X because the Nano S can only support up to six apps installed on your device and the Nano X can support up to 100 apps installed on your device. And to make something clear, if you have the Bitcoin app stored on your Nano device, you can store 100 Bitcoin, one Bitcoin, a thousand, 10,000, a million Bitcoin. It doesn't matter how many Bitcoin you store on that device. What matters is how many unique coins you store on the device. For example, if you have Bitcoin, you have Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Dogecoin and Shiba Inu, well, you're probably gonna max out that crypto device. And if you try to get another crypto like IMX or Sand, well, you're probably not gonna have storage on that device for that app. So if you do have quite a few unique cryptocurrencies and you plan on having more in the future, I would go with the Nano X because it's gonna allow you to store more unique cryptos. Both devices store over 1800 coins with the Ledger Live app. They support over 50 compatible wallets. You can see their independent certifications that they've gotten for security. They have pin codes, 24 word recovery phrases. The Nano X has Bluetooth, whereas the S does not. And then you can see that the screen on the Nano X is better because it's 128 by 64 pixels versus 128 by 32 pixels. USB-C connector versus micro USB. I hate micro USB. I feel like they're just so flimsy. So if you can get the USB-C option, in my opinion, go with that. You can see some differences in battery size and weight. And both of these devices are made out of plastic. However, they do have this metal enclosure, which makes it feel a bit more high quality and makes it really just look like a USB stick, which can be nice if you don't want people 
thinking you have a hardware wallet for your crypto. And then you can see on Ledger's website what crypto assets they support. And you can see that there's just tons and tons of pages. You can just click through for days practically because there's over 1800 assets. And then you can search here as well if you wanna check for a crypto and make sure that they support it before buying. And now with the Trezor, they have the Trezor Model 1, which is right here for $63, and the Model T, which is right here for $221. And you can see the comparison right here on Trezor's website. Both models are gonna be made of plastic, but the Trezor Model T is gonna have a full color touchscreen versus just a monochrome display with the two buttons on the Trezor Model 1. The Trezor Model 1 is gonna support over a thousand cryptocurrencies, and the Trezor Model T is gonna support all of those cryptocurrencies, plus some others, Notably, Cardano is supported on the Trezor Model T. So if you do want a Trezor that supports Cardano, you do have to go with the more premium model and get the Model T. You can see that their security protection is the same on both models. The Model T does support Shamir backup, which means if you ever lose your private key, you're gonna be able to recover that because they use this generate, distribute, and relax model. You can see that the Model T has a couple additional features like this FIDO2 authentication. Coming soon on the Model T, you're gonna have on Trezor data and file encryption. And with the Model T, you're gonna have micro SD card support. Now it's important to Note when you look at these treasure devices versus the ledgers, the ledgers can have a maximum amount of crypto apps installed. Whereas with the Trezor, you don't have to worry about these storage issues that you have on the ledger because all you have to do to support more unique cryptos on the Trezor is go into Trezor Suite and toggle on a couple of extra cryptos. And you don't have to worry about storage capacity on your Trezor because the apps are actually held within the Trezor Suite. And then you can see on their website that they support 1816 cryptos. You can scroll down for days practically just like on the ledger and see how many cryptos they support. And if you do want to check support, for a specific crypto, you can just come in here and type, look for Shiba. You can see that they support Shiba. They support Dogecoin. They support Cardano on the Trezor Model T and neither of them support Solana. So that's Ledger versus Trezor and the two devices from each company. Now, which one should you choose? And again, I'll reiterate that both options are gonna be great at storing your crypto and it really just kind of comes down to personal preference. It's like choosing an iPhone or an Android or Dodge over Ford or LG or Samsung. They're both great products and it's really just just gonna be based upon your own preference. So if you're brand new to crypto, you have Ethereum, you have Bitcoin, and maybe one other coin like Dogecoin, I would suggest going with the lower tier models like the Ledger Nano S or the Trezor Model 1. If you want better NFT support and you want Solana support, you're gonna have to go with the Ledger Nano S or the Ledger Nano X. If you prefer having all the code open source so you can verify everything independently, then go with the Trezor, either the Model 1 or the Model T. And when you're picking between your Trezor, if you want better NFT support, go with the Model T. If you want Cardano support, go with the Model T. If you're just new and you don't need all the features, then go with the Model 1 from Trezor. And if you want Bluetooth support so you don't have to connect your device every single time you go to make a transaction, then go with the Ledger Nano X. Let me know what questions you have. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.